Welcome to the Lifetime Assembly Channel. My name is John, and today I'm going to help you assemble your 15 by 8 outdoor storage shed. Before we get started, make sure the model number of your shed is listed in the description below. This video will follow the steps outlined in the assembly manual that comes with the shed. If you've already begun and need help on a specific step, check the description below for a timestamp associated with each step. Your shed comes in several boxes but should all be on one big pallet. Let's take a look at what you should have received. There are steps within this assembly that require more than one person, so be sure to have at least one other adult available to help. Before we get into the assembly process, let's take a look at the tools you'll need to complete the job. You'll need two 7 16 wrenches, two 3 8 wrenches, an adjustable crescent wrench, a rubber mallet, a Phillips head screwdriver, pliers, a hammer, safety glasses, and a drill. You may see us use an impact driver. If you decide to use one as well, be sure not to over torque or over tighten the hardware. To make this easier, we're going to use a Phillips head bit, vice grips, a socket adapter, and a socket set. All lifetime sheds require a platform to be built on. We recommend building one out of concrete, but you could also build one out of lumber. It's crucial that you refer to the assembly manual to review the safety instructions for this build to prevent serious injury or property damage. This video is meant to be used as a companion to the assembly manual and not a direct replacement. So for the best results, make sure to have the assembly manual on hand during the build. All right, let's get started. This section will go over how to build the foundation of your shed. This video will focus on the assembly of the shed and not the foundation, so refer to your manual in section 1 to see how to properly build your foundation. Take two gutter channels and make sure that one of them has a notch at the end, and then align the holes in the connector with the holes in the ends of the gutter channels. Secure the connector to the gutter channels with the hardware. Line up the holes at the ends of the truss brace with the holes in the middle of the gutter channel and secure with the hardware. Make sure the head of the bolt is on the inside of the gutter channel and the nut is on the outside. To make tightening this hardware easier, I like to use a Phillips head inside of a pair of vice grips. Insert the truss rod into the connector and the truss brace. Only tighten this hardware enough so that the rod doesn't wiggle. Repeat the previous steps for a second truss assembly. Repeat the previous steps two more times, except none of the gutter channels will have a notch at the end.
Take another gutter channel and a short gutter channel that has a large hole at one end and connect them together using the same method as the other truss assemblies. Take a truss brace and line up the holes in the middle of the long gutter channel and the end of the short gutter channel. Only secure through the long gutter channel for now. Before securing the opposite end, add this bracket oriented like this to the short gutter channel. Only finger tighten this hardware for now. Take the horizontal truss brace and line up the hole in the end with the hole in the middle of the short gutter channel and the hole in the middle of the horizontal truss brace and the hole at the top of the bracket. All of the hardware has been the same up to this point, except for this shorter bolt will be used to attach the horizontal truss brace to the bracket. Now you can tighten all the hardware. Now add the truss rod using the same method as the other truss assemblies. Add this bracket oriented like this to the horizontal truss brace, making sure that the long side of the bracket goes against the truss brace. Only finger tighten this hardware for now. Add the support tube in the large hole on the short gutter channel, making sure that the flat side is facing up. Take the two gable halves that don't have a curve at the bottom, overlap them, and insert the hardware. Place a screen over the vent, making sure the holes line up, then place it on the front side of the gable and secure with the hardware. Take the smaller of the square tubes and insert a cap into each end. Take the gable that's one piece and place the tube over the divots on the back side. Make sure that the dimpled holes are facing down and that the square dimple is facing towards you. Secure the tube to the gable through the oblong holes. Take the gables that have a curve at the bottom, overlap them in the center, and secure with the hardware. Attach the screen and vent using the same method as the other gable. Add 
add a plug to each end of the longer square tube. Place the tube over the back of the gable using the same method as before, making sure that the dimpled holes are facing down and that the square dimple hole is facing towards you. Secure the tube to the gable through the two center holes first. Finish securing the tube to the gable through the oblong holes. Take the left door, which is the door with the Lifetime logo, and insert the hinge tube into the round hole at the bottom of the door. Next, we're going to slide the door and channel on, but before you do, make sure that these holes line up with this notch in the door. Before you slide the door and channel on, make sure you add the dead bolts oriented like this into these notches on either end of the door. Place the strike plate over the door and channel oriented like this, making sure the holes line up. Secure the strike plate with the hardware and this bracket, making sure it's oriented like this. Place the handle over the holes on the front side and then secure on the back side with the hardware. Repeat the previous steps for the other left door, except this time you're going to use a shorter hinge tube. Take one of the right doors and insert a long hinge tube into the round hole at the bottom of the door. Add the door and channel to the opposite edge of the door, but before you do, make sure the two holes in the door and channel line up with the notch in the door. Take the handle and thumb lever and insert the tabs on the thumb lever into the holes on the handle. Insert the thumb lever into the hole in the door and secure with the hardware.
Add the locking hardware to the door oriented like this. Add the plastic bracket to the lever oriented like this. Add the spring to the lever and metal bracket. Repeat the previous steps for the other right door, except this time you're going to use a short hinge tube. Connect an inner floor panel to an outer floor panel by lifting one panel up at a 45 degree angle, interlocking the tabs, and then laying it back down. It may be helpful to have another person stand on the floor panel you're connecting it to so that it doesn't move. The third panel will need to be oriented in a specific way. This round hole will need to go up against the previous panel. This panel needs to be oriented in a specific way as well. The key-shaped hole needs to be on the opposite edge of the previous panel. The orientation of the next inner panel doesn't matter. Secure the panels together by inserting a screw through these small divots along the edges of the panel. A set of doors will go on the long edge and the short edge. Decide which edge you want your doors to go on and then insert your bushings into these holes. There are two narrow wall panels, one with a notch in the top right and one with a notch in the top left. For this step, you'll need the narrow panel with the notch in the top left. Locate these cutouts next to this bushing and insert the tabs at the bottom of the narrow wall panel into the cutouts. Slide the panel over towards the bushing to lock it into place. I'm usually comfortable kicking it over with my foot, but you can also use a block and a rubber mallet. Using the same method, insert the window panel into the cutouts and then slide it towards the previous wall panel. Before securing the wall panels together, make sure that this line at the top of the wall panel is even. Take the corner wall panel labeled AGN or labeled 105 or front left and place the tabs at the bottom into the cutouts. Slide the panel towards the outside edge to lock it into place. Lean the panel away, fold the panel over, and line up the tabs at the bottom with the cutouts on the floor panel, and then apply downward pressure to lock it into place. Secure the wall panel to the neighboring panel, making sure the line at the top is even.
Take the corner wall panel labeled AGY 104 or front right and insert it into this corner using the same method as before. If you're having a hard time getting the tabs to go in, take a block and place it under each tab and press down one at a time. Add five regular wall panels to this edge using the same method as the other panels, making sure to keep the line at the top even. Add the corner wall panel labeled AGW or 106 to this corner. Add two more regular wall panels to this short edge. Add the final corner panel labeled AGL or 107 to this corner. Add the other window wall panel next to the previous panel. Now you can add the final narrow panel. Add the wall supports to the narrow wall panels, making sure that the two holes that are close together go at the top. The hole at the top will not get any harbor. Add a wall support to these channels on the window panel, making sure to use the same method as before. Add a wall support to each wall on the long edge, making sure that the wall support goes in the channel directly below the cutout at the top of the wall panel. Add two wall supports to the wall on the short edge. This wall support will be added like the others, going directly in the middle below the cutout. This wall support will go in the channel just to the right of the notch at the top of the wall panel. It's important that you add the wall supports like this, with one directly below the cutout at the top, and the other in the channel just to the right of the cutout at the top. There are three different height settings you can choose for your shelf. They're determined by these divots on the corner wall panel. Decide how high you want your shelf to go, and insert the brackets into the cutouts on the wall support at the corresponding height. Take your shelf and fold the flaps on the ends up. Then place the shelf onto the brackets, making sure that these divots are against the wall. Then attach the shelf to the brackets and the divots on the corner wall panels.
To make this easier, have someone on the outside pushing against where you're inserting the hardware. The corner shelf can go in any corner of the shed at any of the three height settings. We're going to put ours in these two corners. Fold the flaps up and line up the holes with the divots in the corner. With the help of another person, lift the gable that has a straight edge onto the short wall that has the shelf. Secure the gable through the 14 holes on the wall. Take a truss that doesn't have a notch on either end and insert them into the cutouts closest to the gable we just added. Slide a roof panel over the gable and into the gutter channel on the truss, making sure that the edge of the gable goes into this groove on the roof panel. You know the roof panel is in the correct position when the alignment nub is inside the notch on the truss. Secure the roof panel to the wall panel through the four holes at the bottom. Secure the roof to the gable through the lower three holes. Then secure the roof to the truss through the lower two holes. Add a roof support into the notch on the gable and the notch on the roof panel. Finish securing the roof panel to the truss and gable through the remaining holes. Repeat the previous steps on the opposite side of the previous roof panel. Add a truss with a notch at the end into the next set of cutouts, making sure that the end with the notch goes into the open cutout where the doors will go. Make sure to continue to hold the truss until it's secure with the roof panel so that it doesn't fall out. Slide a roof panel into the gutter channel on the truss and on the neighboring truss and then secure with the hardware. Make sure the alignment nub goes in the notch and if you're struggling to get them to line up, Click on this link here to see some helpful tips. Repeat the previous steps for the roof panel on the opposite side. Take the left door with the long hinge tube and place it into this bushing along the short edge of the shed, making sure the hole at the bottom of the hinge tube lines up with the slit in the bushing. Insert the cotter pin from the outside going in and then expand the ends to lock it into place. Repeat the previous steps for the right door that has the long hinge tube in the opposite bushing.
Close the doors and place a larger gable that has a curve at the bottom onto the hinge tubes. Line up the holes in the gable with the holes in the corner panel and then secure with the hardware. Add a truss assembly without a notch into the cutouts closest to the gable. Add two roof panels over the gable and the truss using the same method as the opposite side. Add the other truss with a notch on one end into the cutouts using the same method as before. Add two more roof panels using the same method as the other side, remembering to have someone hold the truss until it's secure. Take your center truss and place it in the cutout on the back wall. Lift the truss up so that the holes in the support tube line up with the small holes on the truss. Connect the support tube to the trusses with your hardware. Add the two remaining doors to the long edge using the same method as the other doors. Close the doors and place a small gable onto the hinge tubes. You may need to maneuver the doors or the walls to make sure that these tabs go into the gutter channel. Place the center truss inside the notch at the top of the gable and then line up the bracket with the divot and secure with the hardware. Now you can tighten the hardware securing the other side of the bracket. Add two roof panels opposite the doors on the long edge using the same method as the others. Take the drainage plate label with an L and add it to this gutter channel and secure it with the hardware. Repeat for the other side with the drainage plate labeled R. Take the large angled roof panel and fold these flaps up. Place it over the gable and onto the center truss. Secure the roof to the gable through the eight holes.
Then secure the gable to the truss through the four holes. Now secure the drainage plate to the roof panel. Add this roof panel over the previous panel and secure it through these two holes. Add this roof panel here over the other roof panels, making sure the edges are flush. Secure the roof panels and trusses together through these 18 holes. Locate this area on the gable and insert yourself tapping screws. They will be going through the hinge tube underneath. The manual doesn't call for washers, but if you have some extras, I like to add them here. You only need to perform this step on the doors on the long edge. Starting on either end of the shed, take the roof cap labeled AGG and secure it to the gable through the four holes. Take a roof cap labeled AFY and place it over the previous roof cap and then secure it to the truss and roof panel. Repeat this process four more times with the remaining roof caps labeled AFY. The final roof cap will be labeled AFW. Take a skylight and fold it in half, place it through the roof, line up the tabs on the skylight with the holes, and then secure with the hardware. Repeat this process for the next five skylights.
Locate these gaps on the short wall opposite the doors and insert the clips oriented like this. Next, we're gonna add gap flaps to the doors on the short edge. Locate these divots on the doors and add the gap flap oriented like this. On the inside of the shed, on either side of the window, there are four indicators where you will insert the screws for the shutters on the outside. Orient the right shutter like this and place it on the screws, making sure the screws go through the hole labeled AR, while someone on the inside finishes securing until it's flush against the wall. Repeat the previous step for the left shutter, except make sure the screws go through the holes labeled 8L. Repeat the previous step for the shutters on the other window. Take the window and peel the plastic film from both sides. Insert the window into the frame, making sure the lip is at the top and facing out. Insert the small screw into the hole at the bottom. Then add the window locks over the divots at the top of the window and leave the hardware loose. Repeat the previous step for the other window. Your pegboard strips will be used to hold your tools throughout the shed. Find a good spot on any wall and insert the hardware to hold it in place. There's multiple hooks to choose from and they go in your pegboard like this. This section will go over how to properly level the doors of your shed. To see a video on how to do that, follow this link here. We've already done that, so we're going to move on to the next step. This section will go over how to properly anchor your shed to your foundation. 
Since we're inside, we're not gonna be able to do that, but it's important that you do. So refer to your instruction manual in section 14 to see how to properly anchor your shed to your foundation. Thank you for watching this video on how to assemble your lifetime 15 by eight outdoor storage shed. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up. For more content like this, subscribe to our channel. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to our customer service team and check out our other awesome products at lifetime.com.